So, since Avengers Infinity War goes into theaters this week, and the trailer for the new Venom movie came out today, why don't we talk about Spider-Man? But instead of talk about one of the newer games, why don't we talk about one of the more obscure ones, Ultimate Spider-Man for the GBA. So, throughout the main story, you play as one of two characters, Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man, and Eddie Brock, who is also a creepy goo monster who eats people named Venom. So this is basically the plot of the game. In an attempt to find a cure for cancer, Richard Parker and Eddie Brock Sr. accidentally create the suit. Or what is more commonly referred to as the symbiote. And good job on that one, guys. Because evil murder death goo made from your son's DNA is always the best answer for cancer, right? No? Well, it was for science, so who cares? Regardless, when they died, Trask of Trask Industries wrongfully took ownership of the suit. But it escapes and joins up with Eddie, so in an attempt to reclaim the suit, he hires Sable, a bounty hunter lady who wears way too much white, to bring it back. So you're probably wondering, how did all this happen? Well, I'll tell you. Spider-Man broke into Trask Industries trying to get information on his father. The suit joined up with him, and then he didn't like it, so the suit ran away. Because it got his feelings hurt. You know, the regular stuff that superheroes do. Because none of that was illegal at all. And from a storytelling standpoint, that kind of makes Spider-Man a side character. What? Spider-Man isn't a side character? You shut your dirty mouth. I knew this game was stupid. Anyone who likes the Game Boy is stupid and a smelly hobo and can't count higher than three. Dude, bro, chill out. All I'm saying is that Spider-Man has a little bit of a lesser role in this game. That's not a problem. He's still in the game. I mean, you can't have the game be named after someone and not have the character at least in the game. So, let's go a little more into Spider-Man's character as we go into the gameplay. The gameplay is as you'd expect from a Spider-Man game on the Game Boy. You punch, kick, and shoot webs at enemies and do little mini-objectives. Like destroying bombs, saving hostages, and chasing people down. Which, again, like I said earlier, is very similar to other Game Boy Spider-Man games like Spider-Man 3, based on the third film in the Tobey Maguire series. There's the, there's the box art. You can look at it if you want. Yeah. The gameplay, despite it being similar to other Spider-Man games on the Game Boy, is pretty solid. Spider-Man controls as you'd expect them to. I'm by no means good Spider-Man. Sometimes I just kinda die? Alright Spider-Man, you were practically made for beating up bad guys. You can do it! You can do it! You're dead to me. <laughs> but if you played any other Spider-Man game on the Game Boy, you should be able to figure it out and have a lot of fun with it. But it's not my favorite part about this game. Aw oh, yeah, getting into the good part. That's right, I'm the murder goo now. Now no one can stop me! Huh, I died. So as you can see, there are some very small changes when it comes to the Venom gameplay. Like for instance, he can't web swing, so he gets the ability to jump higher. Also, the health drains as you go about the level. Which is probably a problem, because I don't see any health packs, and I don't know how I'm going to get healed, and I'm probably going to die if I don't do anything! Except, you're not. Thankfully, they thought I hadn't replaced his kick with a creepy tentacle-looking thing. Ah. The tentacle allows you to eat your enemies once you have them at a low enough health. Or even sometimes when they're at full health. I kind of feel really bad for this guy in the yellow jacket. He's just got, like, his fists up. He's coming at me. He, he believes he can do it, and nope. He just gets eaten. Also, gameplay for both involves running around and finding unlockables, which can give moves or increase things about your character. Like, for instance, you can find extra web cartridges lying around for Spider-Man, and you can increase the minimum amount of health you're given when you start a level with Venom. And speaking of levels, this game really doesn't follow a level format. The game is divided into seven issues. When you complete one issue, you move on to the next. Each issue has three chapters in it and each chapter has a couple of screens in it that has the mini objectives that I was talking about before. When you complete all the screens, you complete a chapter. So that's multiple screens for one chapter, for three chapters, for one issue, for seven issues. 
And I know that sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. I was able to complete this game in three hours. That's really short, even for the Game Boy standards. But regardless, if you enjoy Spider-Man, then you'll enjoy this game. So that's why I give this game my rating of a radioactive spider out of 10. Sure, it was cool, but it didn't last for long. And unless you're that kind of person who plays a game's story over and over and over and over and over again in one week, you're probably not going to get a lot of replay value out of it. So after playing the story, if you want to give it another play, you might want to wait a while. Well, this has been DNR, and if you liked the video, don't forget to tell me what you want to see me review next time in the comments down below, and I'll see you nuggets in the next one. Also, quick side note, could we talk about the music in the Venom segments? Because I don't think the people knew what game they were writing music for. Hey gang, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to stick around for more content, as I'm bringing back Fortnite and TF2 for some more awesome videos.